Hello, fellow YouTubers, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. On the last episode, we uh, continued our investigation into day two by uh, leaving the <laughs> leaving the Gatewater Hotel after speaking with Old Bag a little bit, getting a little bit more information about gossip. But we headed over to the Criminal Affairs Department because we wanted to go interview both Matt and uh, Adrian, if we could. Luckily, we got free permission, but we also learned that they have another witness who turned out to be Powers. Apparently, he saw something, but even he, well, he knows, but he doesn't want to tell us. But he also gave us more information about Celeste's suicide and that, uh, I don't remember what he said, but we talked about Matt and Adrian, who both have Psyche Locks now. Matt has five, and Adrian had one. But after heading back to our office, and Gumshoe immediately brought barged in, saying that he had the receipt for the person who bought the stuffed bear that had the camera and the transmitter. Turns out it was Matt. So with that information and with the receipt, we headed back over to Matt. Uh, Psyche Lock broke all of his locks and found out that he was the one that hired the killer. Because why else would he have set a camera in the room? Which is bad. Very bad, like incredibly bad for us for multiple reasons. One, it means he's guilty. He did it. <laughs> but yet we're defending him to try and get a not guilty verdict because B, we have to get a not guilty verdict because Maya is currently in, Maya is currently somewhere. And unless we get a not guilty verdict, she's not gonna be let go. So, <laughs> but yeah, let's talk with our uh, scarred defendant. Also, he pulled out that jar of Let's just call it honey. Why not? <laughs> Honey's not that thin, but whatever. Matt secret motive for murder. Well done, Mr. Wright. I bet it wasn't easy to gather as much information as you have. You really... So you are Shelly the Killer's client? You didn't really think I would dirty my own hands in this, did you? But what do you mean? <laughs> and that woman, Adrian, was quite brave herself. Trying to stick the crime on me. I didn't think she had it in her. But all I care about is that Juan is dead. Isn't that right, Mr. Lawyer? Th th that's... You're lying! What a terrible... It's way past your bedtime, little girl. Gone! Let us grown-ups talk about more adult things. Why? Why did he have the video camera? And... A weakling soon believes the word of others. Just like that pathetic Adrian. He knew about Miss Andrews' secrets? But I'm no weakling. I don't believe anyone. Least of all assassins. What? Oh, come now, Miss Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. They turn their clients into cash cows by holding the sinful deed over their heads. And a superstar like me, how much do you think I'm worth? Care to guess? And, and that's why? Yep, that's where the video comes in. It's got his face and the crime scene recorded on it, preserved for all time. With that, I can keep him at bay, and even blackmail him if I want. That's right, that video is my insurance. Isn't that what they call it, Mr. Wright? Why would you do something so wrong? Because I'm a grown-up, and I can. Good enough of an answer for you, little girl? Ugh, this guy's done a complete 180. Why would you kill Mr. Corda? Because he was about to sling so much dung into my beautiful public image. Scandals are a little annoying, aren't they? This is all because of that press conference, isn't it? If Mr. Corda had been able to give it, then Mr. Engard's secret would have... Ah, well, that's what we call taking advantage of the situation, you know? I had no interest in doing it, really, but bit by bit, it crept up on me. And 
then the situation just presented itself perfectly. How beautiful, I thought. And that's... And that's how Mr. Corda ended up dead. Let me tell you something. I'm not like Adrian. I don't depend on anyone. People are simply things to be used. Used and thrown away. Put on a sweet, innocent face, and people will swallow anything you feed them. Adrian fell for it. The assassin, too. Oh, and how can I forget? Even you fell for it, Mr. Lawyer. Everyone, all working their butts off for me, Matt and Garth. Ah, uh, did that leave you speechless? What a shame. What's wrong, Mr. Lawyer? You've grown awfully quiet. How could I have been so deceived by you all this time? When we first met, I asked if you had killed Juan Corda. And you answered very clearly that you hadn't killed anyone. Hey, now. I never told you any lies. The person who did the killing was that the killer guy, right? All I'm guilty of is taking a cat nap in my room. You. You. You killed Mr. Corda! <laughs> I dare to say that in court tomorrow. <sighs> ah, but too bad. You can't. You're my lawyer, after all, aren't you? You can always drop my case and refuse to represent me. How's that sound? Ah, but you can't, can you? That'd be the one thing you absolutely can't do. Mystic Maya! You wouldn't want to test a killer. He's a man of his word. Or so I hear. You can end up getting a certain friend of yours rubbed out if you lose. You scoundrel. Oh, Phoenix, calm down, please. So if I were you, Mr. Wright, Esquire, I think I would give it my all tomorrow. Remember, everyone likes a happy win-win resolution. I'll get you for this! That's such a cliche phrase. Once said something just like that, if memory serves. Of course, well, we all know how well things turn out for him, don't we? Good night, Mr. Lawyer. Maya. Maya. What am I supposed to do? And now, now you finally found it. Oh, that was that was Edward the whole time. <laughs> I thought that was Mia showing up. The starting line of this case. Edgeworth. I don't care for the horrid atmosphere here. Let's return to the precinct. Why the music reset? That's not good. Well, right. What are you going to do? If you plan on changing your strategy. No! We can't do that. That's right. He's holding Maya hostage. What should I do? That's not something I can answer for you. Mr. Edgeworth? Right. Only you can decide where to go from here. One year ago, at that time, I didn't truly understand what a prosecutor was. And that is why I had to leave the prosecutor's office. I felt that I couldn't stand in a court of law until I knew what a prosecutor really was. And now, right, it's your turn. 
my turn? What is this thing called a lawyer? What can you do as one? You must find the answer. And you must find it on your own. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I'm a lawyer. But to fight for someone who is clearly a killer. Matt Engard. That man is really... Ah! It doesn't matter who. Every person deserves a proper defense and a fair trial. Isn't that the basis of our judicial system? <laughs> fair? How many guilty people... <laughs> isn't, it, isn't like the guilty to innocent ratio like... Way in favor of guilty? Proper defense? What exactly is that? Is it where a lawyer forcibly and blindly gets an acquittal through shouting and trickery? <sighs> Ironic that you of all people should say such a thing. Isn't that exactly how you have fought for your clients up until now? Ugh. <sighs> Well, that may be true, but but that's that's because I believed my clients to be innocent from the bottom of my heart. But if I were to get in guard and acquittal, that that isn't a proper defense at all. I became a lawyer because I thought I thought I could save people who were suffering and in pain. But when I look at this mess we're in, I can't even protect the person closest to me. Even though I win the case, I still lose in the end. I just don't know what to do! Right. Would you get a hold of yourself? You have it all wrong. Huh? We aren't some sort of heroes. We're only human, you and I. You want to save someone? That's something easier said than done, wouldn't you say? That's... You are a defense attorney. You can't run away from that. You can only fight. That's all you can do. But why fight? People like you and Francisca von Karma are always using all you have to pin me down. You fight to the very end, even when you know the truth is not with you. But I'm not like you. I can't fight for a false verdict. For a man I clearly know to be guilty. Francisca. She fights for herself. The only thing she fights for is her perfect win record. That's all. And that doesn't exist anymore. And? Isn't that the same as you? Isn't that why you ran away a year ago? Because your precious win record was destroyed? You are so petty. I see. Now I understand why you despise me so. However, you are mistaken. What are you... Thanks to you, when you sealed off my path to a perfect win record, I began to realize the error of my ways. I realized that things such as a perfect record were meaningless. What? I don't believe you. Are you saying that is why you left the prosecutor's office? But then, why? Why are you here now? The answer to that is something you will find out on your own. I have faith you will see it before the verdict is read tomorrow. But if you can't, 
then you'll be powerless to change the ending of the story. Mr. Nick! The transceiver! I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Now then, Mr. Attorney. Do you wager you can obtain an acquittal tomorrow? My, my. What is the matter, Mr. Attorney? I don't sense your usual anger this time. Tell me. Please. Why are you holding Maya hostage for Mr. Engard's sake? Why are you... Why are you doing this for that cold-blooded killer? Right. Please don't misunderstand things. He is my client. Don't toy with me! A man who hires an assassin is just as much of a killer himself. I believe you are asking me for a reason as to why I am doing what I am. Yeah. This is what I'd like to call my aftercare. What the heck is aftercare? My name carries a certain amount of honor and dignity, Mr. Attorney. I take great care to ensure that no suspicion falls upon my clients for my handiwork. That is what is called client relations and is a part of an assassin's duty. An assassin's duty? Yeah, like a creed. You were unlucky this time. My client was arrested as a suspect. As a result, I did what I had to do to enlist your expert help, Mr. Attorney. And to ensure that you would do everything in your power to the very end. What is your name? I believe I told you once before. However, you did. But my name is the killer. Shelly, the killer. You're Shelly the killer? Please keep in mind you do not have much space to maneuver with me. As a de-killer, I always finish what I set out to do. If you fail to keep up your end of the bargain. M Maya! It would be my duty as an assassin to see it to it she receives a nice long nap. <laughs> no! Now then, if you'll excuse me. If someone were to trace the signal back to me, it would be quite troublesome. I don't know what to say. Edgeworth! Hmm. D did you hear that? At the end of that transmission! Huh? Oh, that. It sounded like a cat. A cat? It can't be! That cat, can it? What is it? I, I, I think I know where Shelly the Killer is holding Maya hostage. Edgeworth, have all police units head for Engard Mansion immediately. All right, you hurry over there. Well, you hurry over as well then. Don't lose hope yet, Pearls. The fight has only just begun. Yeah. All right. We're gonna nab ourselves a killer. Maya! Please answer us! Mystic Maya! We have this area completely surrounded. There is no way for him to escape. 
Assuming he's still in the area. I can't believe it. That butler, all this time, he was the killer. He and Engard were working together all this time. I'm sure they had worked out a contingency plan ahead of time. Darn it. Well, there's something new here. Oh, it's a figurine of a bear. But there are a lot of cuts in for some reason. Hey, we got the we got the wooden bear added to our court record for some reason. A bear. Is that more of a thing for Mr. Corda? Why would something like this be here? Right. Look down. There's a little pet door installed here. I'm sure that's for Shu. Do you think that this came through that little door? And this door. It's locked. Well, I'm pretty used to breaking doors down by now. Let's go, Edgeworth. Ah! There's no one here! In the looks of this room, I would say this is Engard's private lounge. Look at this right. An antenna for sending and receiving radio signals. And a VCR. Check inside the deck. If there's a tape, it would be an important piece of evidence. If we're lucky, it'll have the moment of the crime was committed recorded on it. I'm sorry, but... The tape deck is empty. There's no tape to be found. No! But there's no mistake that someone used this to record something. It looks like someone took the tape we're looking for and escaped with it. Oh, this looks very familiar. So does this. He searched all over. It looks like he got away. I'm sorry. It looks like he slipped out of our grasp this time. Now, we've lost our only lead. Don't give up yet. That little girl is looking to you to be her pillar. Yeah, you're right. We're close. I can tell. We've already set up checkpoints along every route leading out of this district. Leave the rest to us. Maya. Well, that's why we looked at the door when we were here with the butler. Also, that's why I didn't point out the butler was very, very familiar looking. We would have spoiled this. No, we're not moving yet. There's something here. This thing. This looks like a picture of Miss Impacts. With love, Celeste. Miss Impacts? You mean. Yes. Mr. Corda's former manager. Why would a picture of Mr. Impacts be here in Mr. Engard's mansion? And why does it say with love? Hmm. This might be a clue. So we're just we're just stealing it. Ah! What's wrong, Pearls? Please let me see that picture frame. Huh? What's so special about the frame? On the back! There's something written on the back of the frame! Maya! It's Miss Maya! She left us a message! What? Oh, not the sad music now! I thought you would come. I knew you would. Now listen up! You better get Engard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you, ever. I'm fine, so you don't need to worry. There's so much I want to write, but I don't think I have a lot of time left. 
Pearly. You're there too, right? Make sure you help Nick, okay? Someone's gotta watch out for the helpless lunk. Um, that's it for now, Nick. I guess I'll talk to you guys later. Sob. Right. What's wrong? Why the blank stare? Oh, uh, nothing. We searched the house, and this is the last room. It looks like he eluded us. Edgeworth. Yes. As far as clues go, I think this is about all I'm going to get. But I'm still short one last thing. And what is that? Miss Andrew's Psyche Lock. If I could just find out what secret she's holding, then I think I stand a chance in court tomorrow. To blow this case wide open and expose the truth. I think I know what you're thinking. I'll contact the detention center. Ah. Uh, thanks, Edgeworth. Well, let's go, Pearls. It's time to open that last lock. It's gotta be, like, almost midnight at this point. Good evening, Mr. Wright. What's wrong? You look ill. Miss Andrews, I have come to remove your Psyche Lock. Psyche Lock? I want to know, and you will tell me your secret. Fine, go ahead. Try to break me if you can. Ugh. Well, we're not gonna get any more, any more, uh, any more clues, so we have to use what we have. Luckily, I think we have everything we need. It's only one? How bad can this be? Why frame him? Can you please tell me why you framed Mr. Engard for the murder? I've already told you countless times. It's because I thought Matt was the killer. No, that's not it. I know you have a personal reason to dislike Mr. Engard. Miss Andrews, you may think I didn't hear it, but I know you said something earlier. You said revenge. So you are saying I was taking my revenge out on Matt, and that's why. What an absurd idea. I don't have anything I want to take revenge for. Miss Andrews, a woman who lives by being dependent on other people. There is something or someone in her past that would make her take revenge. Yeah, how about the death of her mentor? Also, yeah, now... Now, uh... Now we got John Doe in our thing. Celeste. There is only one catalyst that could cause such strong feelings. And even revenge. And that is Miss Impact Suicide. What are you trying to say? Celeste was Juan's manager. On top of that, the one who hit her suicide note was also Juan. What does all this have to do with Matt? You're right. You haven't mentioned him. Yet. But for you to hate Mr. Ungard... It would mean that he must have had some relation to Miss Impact's and her suicide. Can you explain to me this relation between Celeste and Matt? Well, it's quite literally the last thing I picked up. This. This is a photo of Miss Impact's, correct? She looks younger than when she passed away, though.
with love. Celeste. This is Miss Impact's handwriting, isn't it? Where did you find this? No, that's all right. It was a rhetorical question. Yeah, it is. I found this at Mr. Engard's mansion. And after all this time, my last remaining secret has been revealed. I actually think that's the last Lucky Luck of the game, too. Why frame him? Celeste. She was supposed to get married to Juan. Yes. But I heard that it didn't work out. Because Mr. Cora didn't want to get married to her anymore. Right? Yes. Because of Matt. Because of Mr. Engard? What do you mean? I think I can see where this is going. Celeste. She was Matt's manager a long time ago. She was the happiest woman in the world at the time. I was working part-time back then. And I often saw the two of them together. So that's why. With love, Celeste is written on the frame of that picture. They were a couple. They were a couple, weren't they? It wasn't anything as splendid as that. Celeste was being used. Toyed with until she was thrown away. That's so horrible. Matt's entire image is built on how nice and wonderful of a man he is. A scandal would have destroyed that. Which is why Celeste, in her kindness, moved over to Worldwide Studios. And that is where she met Juan. She seemed really happy with him. Even happier than when she was with Matt. Celeste and Juan were such a good match that they were even planning to get married. And then, it was suddenly called off. On the night Juan called their marriage off, Celeste, she killed herself. And that's why I framed Matt. It was revenge for Celeste and my, for myself. How does Matt tie into that revenge? I'm sure even you can guess why Juan called the wedding off, right? Oh yeah, of course. Matt confessed to Juan about his relationship with Celeste. I see. So that's what happened. But, but then why did Mr. Cord have to call off the wedding? I don't understand it all. It was probably because of his worthless male pride. Juan and Matt were always fierce rivals. Matt waited for the wedding announcement and then unleashed the truth on Juan. He was aiming for when it would hurt Juan the most. Poor Miss Impax! That wasn't the end of it. That day, I'm almost certain that Celeste left the suicide note behind. And in that note, she left a detailed account of Matt's various misdeeds. And so that she would never again be hurt by Matt, she chose to die. Then when Juan discovered her body, he hid her note. But why would he do that? It's simple. Juan realized that note was a powerful weapon against Matt. And it would be especially damaging to his refreshing like a spring breeze image. In any case, with his pride hurt, Juan sought revenge. Revenge. 
There's that word again. Juan wanted to publicly disclose the contents of that suicide note. At a time that would cause Matt the most damage, of course. And that was... at the press conference after the stage show. I know all about it because I heard it all from Juan. I was so I could find out about all that I drew... Is it was so I could find out about all this that I drew close to Juan to begin with. They're quite a pair of hideous monsters, aren't they? Even Celeste's death was something for them to use in their game. That night, when I found Juan's body, it was only natural that I thought the murderer was Matt. Those two are always spying on one another, after all. As for me, I was frantically searching for Celeste's suicide note. I wanted to destroy it before it ever went public. I was going to burn it. I had even brought a lighter. But... I couldn't find the suicide note. And that's when revenge crossed my mind. Yes, I was going to bring to them my own kind of cruel revenge. Celeste was killed by those two monsters. So when I stabbed Juan's body with that knife, I didn't feel a single shred of guilt. And that's all I have to say. Well, Mr. Wright, even knowing all this, are you still going to help that man? Uh, I'm a lawyer. I see. What a foul profession. Thank you very much for your time and for talking with me. It was no big deal. I couldn't sleep anyway. I can't sleep either. Not with my situation. Or with what I know now. This last day of investigation has been soul-crushing for so many people. Oh. But we are heading back to the trial. That, that's actually, that was actually, uh, that was the last piece of investigation. All we have left is trial. And uh, tomorrow we're going to get a verdict. Whether or not that's guilty or not guilty is completely up to Phoenix at this point. He knows the truth. His client is guilty. But can he live with himself if he gets his client a not guilty verdict, knowing that that scum's going to be free? Although, if he does get it, Maya goes free. We'll just have to wait and see. So, on the next episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All, we're heading back to trial one last time. As we need to try and get this verdict decided. So, until next time, hopefully you enjoyed.